my six. You like my new shirt? Score, sing, repeat. For those of you who are not UVA Cavalier football fans and don't know what that means, it's at the football games, whenever we score a touchdown, uh, we sing the alma mater and uh, to celebrate. And then we repeat, we score again and do it all over again. So super excited. One week from tomorrow as of this recording is the first game and it happens to be a home game. And uh, my beautiful bride dearly, AKA Giggly Girl and myself go to all the home games here in Charlottesville. Such a good time, such a wonderful time. So we're on campus today and I bought a few new shirts from the bookstore. This is one of them. So I uh, got some stories for you submitted from viewers. Uh, we are actually a couple of head, a couple of days ahead now as far as editing these things and being able to come out here and read them since I got that whole uh, October Nights Part 2, 31 More Tales for the Halloween season put to rest and actually published now i think there's like eight copies left on etsy so for the 20 plus of you who have them in your cart might want to crap or get off the pot um but whatever they're on amazon as well and the links to both places are in the description box below but my point of this is instead of you know spending six to eight hours a day doing rewrites and edits and all these things I, i'm able to get back into these emails <clears throat> so if you've got any stories associated with any and all things paranormal, supernatural, spiritual, uh, cryptozoological. Wow, what a big worm. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. This is a night crawler. I thought it was a snake by my foot. It's so big. Look at that. All right, so anyway, yeah, I have like ADD or whatever. Um, if you've got stories, send them in. Uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Loch Ness Monster, Mothman. Uh, because we've got more time for them now. Thank you to everybody who has submitted. We're going to read a few for you here this evening. Hope you like them. Uh, got a couple from Gene Kramer. So, Gene, if you're watching, we're finally getting around to your stories. I know you sent them a couple of weeks ago. It was just doing too much at once. So, uh this is a really neat story. Uh, Gene writes, 18 years ago, we brought home two Maine Coon kittens, a brother and sister, which we named Pepper and Penny. Those two cats taught us so much about caring, loving, and superhuman understanding. After we would take a trip, these two wonders would sit in my lap and actually listen to me as I described what we saw and what we did while away from them. At the end of their lives, our male, Pepper, began to show serious signs of decline. He passed away in May of 2017. <clears throat> then his sister, Penny, passed from a stroke that same year, in the month of 2017. There was such a big hole in my heart, and I was so sad one day, in particular, after I'd lost them, when here came Pepper and his sister, Penny, in spirit. They came to me and jumped up on my lap, sitting and looking up at me. I was so happy to see them. They told me that they came to say goodbye and how much they loved my husband and me. They looked at me one last time and then jumped down. And the last time I saw them, they were walking away down our road with their tails straight up in the air, tips twitching together, even in the afterlife. As I crossed the living room on my way to tell my husband what just happened, I looked at the fringed comforter that was lying across the arm of the couch. Right there was the imprint of eight paw prints one set of four large and one set of four smaller. Thank you, Kevin, for the opportunity to share my stories. You may use my name and later on, please feel free to use anything from my stories uh, as yours or in your videos uh, or a book, etc. Love your show, Gene Kramer. Thanks, Gene, for your story. That's a very sweet story. You know, there's been that age old argument of whether or not animals have spirits. Well, I think um, I think Gene's story just kind of answered that one for us, didn't it? Ooh, this one's creepy. This is this is like right out of a you know Halloween book, like October Nights, but it's not. Look, this is how it starts out. Kevin, keep me anonymous, please. All in capital letters. 
You know, I am so excited about coming up here and reading these stories because fall is in the air. Kids are back in school. And like I said, my wife and I went downtown today and we walked around campus, had lunch, walked like three miles. Today was my off day from running. So I don't take off off days. I have days of active rest. And today's active rest was a three mile walk with lunch with my wife. And the students were back at UVA and some of the leaves are already starting to change colors and they're starting to fall. And it's like autumn is in the air. And, and, and what comes with autumn, like Halloween, you know? It's just, it's a wonderful time of year. And so I'm so grateful to each and every one of you who are sending these stories in because this gives us creepy Halloweenish type stories to come out here and read until we get to October, uh, during which time I'm going to come out here and read the stories from October nights. Bad words and all. Brah, get ready to be offended or whatever. But don't, whatever. Let's talk about that in October. Um, but let's get on with this story. This is creepy. I'll tell you what, when I was editing these stories and, and fixing them up and stuff today, uh, I was getting scared. I, I actually stopped after I finished a story that I don't have today. It's going to be read tomorrow. I've got a few already ready for tomorrow. Um, it was so scary. I had to stop and I was in the bedroom alone. I went to join my wife. She was watching a movie and I just went to hang out with her so I wouldn't be alone. That's how creepy some of these are. And this is one of them. Okay called demon in the tree and we are keeping the submitter of this story anonymous as they requested but i hope they're watching they know who they are this is a creepy story kevin please keep me anonymous anonymous please a, a few years ago on a bright summer's day i was taking a walk with a friend down a winding country road that leads to a little corner store we didn't mind this route However, it took us past the edge of this creepy property with this eerie house that everyone with any sense knew not to enter. Seriously, this place gave off bad vibes. The whole place even looked haunted. The house and the property in question had everything it needed to instill a sense of fear and dread. It even came with its own huge, gnarled, and creepy old tree. This old dead tree hadn't produced leaves uh, in years, but this year, for some odd reason, it had, and as we approached it, I couldn't help but be filled with a sense of overwhelming fear and unease as if something malicious was watching us intently. The closer we got, the more oppressive the feeling of imminent danger became. I kept telling myself, you're crazy, it's just a tree, it's just a tree. But then my friend's head jerked up suddenly as if they'd uh, heard a noise I couldn't hear. And pointing up, they said, what's that? What's what, I said, looking up. The tree? The leaves? Vines? What, what do you mean? I asked repeatedly, and I was really trying to see the it my friend was pointing to. Then I saw it. I really wish I hadn't. It was a, it was huge. I bet it was nine or ten feet tall if it was an inch. This it that I saw had large, leathery, bat-like wings behind from which it began to peek at us. It had black curved horns sprouting from its ugly twisted face and cloven hooves for feet. It had piercing yellow glowing eyes and long muscular arms that ended in taloned hands. Everything about this thing was threatening and screamed of danger. As it flew towards us screeching, we knew this thing was deadly and that we could easily become its prey. We both froze for a moment, but only a moment, before running like mad to a nearby neighbor's house, glancing back as we did. Neither of us knew the older woman that lived in that creepy house with the big, gnarled, creepy tree out front. We didn't think she was mean, but there were some that thought she might be a witch or a sorceress or something. So we had always just avoided her. But none of that mattered now with something that looked like it could have been the mascot for doom flying at us with murderous intent. As we ran, we saw what I can only describe as a demon bounce off of some invisible barrier repeatedly, screeching as it did so. We ran towards her house, and our pursuer kept ramming into the invisible dome until it seemed to damage itself and get discouraged and flew away. Thankfully, we never saw it again. Of course, we don't go deep into the woods anymore either, especially at night. Huh. Earthworm. Tastes like chicken. All right, next story. Hi, Kevin. Big fan here. Love your adventures and stories and always hope for a glimpse of he, she, it, or they. 
I'm from East Tennessee and a big tomboy at heart. Not much rattled me growing up until I started having experiences with the supernatural. Some experiences more intense than others. Let's see, are we, we giving permission? Yeah. <clears throat> Laura Church. So if you're watching Laura, this is your story. Okay. Uh, I came from divorced parents. My mother lived with schizophrenia and my father worked for the state. After my parents divorced, my father remarried and started another family. Both of my parents have since passed on. I could almost write a book of short stories on what I've experienced, but I'll save it for another time. I've often wondered if my mother's mental state brought things around me, or if my stress associated with trying to cope with her mental state brought them around, or both. I don't know. But I started experiencing unexplainable events as a young teen, and now... started experiencing unexplainable events as a young teen and now I am 54 years old and the last episode was only four years ago so I'll start with that one. My husband owned his own business and worked late hours. Our teenage son was spending the night with a friend one night and I was home alone. I went to bed about midnight but watched TV to go to sleep. I have cats and they were always close. I could hear the TV but could tell I was right on the edge of drifting into a deep sleep as the sounds from the television began drifting away. Then, BAM! Crash! I sat straight up, startled, looking around. My first thought was that a cat jumped up on something and I laid back down. I closed my eyes to go back to sleep and then jumped right back up. Oh no, I said to myself, I didn't hear a cat jump. I got up and looked around but could not see anything out of place in the bedroom, so I went to the bath. I flipped the light on and just stared. At first, I couldn't see what had happened, or more specifically, my brain wasn't registering, registering what had happened. I had a brass candle holder with three washcloths rolled up neatly sitting inside the holder on my sink. The crash I heard was the candle holder hitting the shower doors and then rolling behind the commode. The washcloths were still rolled neatly, but set in a row straight across as if someone or something had taken them out and delicately arranged them before throwing the holder against the shower door. There were no cats anywhere to be seen. Needless to say, I didn't go to bed easily after that. Feel free to share my little story if you wish, and you can share my name. Sincerely, Laura Church. Thank you, Laura. That is a creepy story. Um, you got, She submitted another story, too. That's probably going to be for tomorrow's. Uh, you know, you said something here in your email... Uh, Laura, that brought back memories. You mentioned uh, that maybe perhaps because of your mother's mental illness or because of your anxiety associated with having to live with that or deal with that may have made you susceptible to being able to see and hear things that others can't. Um, I think there's something to that, and I think a lot of people in the paranormal investigative atmosphere think that as well. I had a, uh, a battle buddy in the Army in Iraq who had gifts and I don't want to go into too much detail here. Unfortunately, he and I are no longer friends. Um, but, uh, he, he, I, I, he would see and hear things, claim to see and hear things. And I thought he was kind of nuts until I started seeing and hearing things too. And I went and talked to him about it. And, uh, I asked him, why was it that I could see these things or hear these things and he said it was because I was cracked. He said something had happened that just shattered a part of my spirit, which it does. these things don't kill us. And frankly, I do believe that that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger, even though it can cause a lot of pain for a long time. But uh, when you go through experiences, emotional and psychological experiences that just are not meant really to be part of the normal experience of the human endeavor, but which unfortunately are, uh, according to this guy, and like you suggest in your email, and as I've come to find myself, I do believe it opens, I don't want to say portals, but maybe it just activates abilities. I felt like something tickled me on the neck, but I'm sure it's just rain dripping from the tree. Of course, maybe that's what it wants me to think. So uh, give me your two cents on that if you'd like to. Anybody that's got any experience or any opinions along those lines. 
I do appreciate, by the way, viewers, how as of late, uh, you've been keeping the comments relevant to the subject matter of the video. I do appreciate that. Um, next story. It says, Hi, Kevin and Erie. Been watching the evolution of your channel since your post office days. Always enjoyable. So that would have been 2018. So it's been like four years. I've had a few experiences that rank high on the weird shitometer of life. Sasquatch, aliens, UFO, ghosts, etc. So, wait a minute, do I have permission to use a name? Because I want, if they're watching, I want them to know that this is their story. Julie Tenning. Julie Tenning, if you're watching, this is your, I like that use of the term shitometer or shitometer, however you pronounce it. We're going to be using lots of words like that in October. Okay. Um, I just heard something big crashing through the forest. Tree knock. The veil is growing very thin. And I'm out here later than usual. And we did just have rain, which creates water. We're on a hill where field meets forest. You guys can Google this. I picked this spot for these stories because, I mean, Google it. Google where does the veil, where is the veil the thinnest? There are physical locations. So you keep getting my six. All right. Had a, had a bunch of weird experiences. Rank high up there on the shadometer of life. Weird shadometer of life. Sasquatch, aliens, UFOs, ghosts, etc. Some I put down to too much reading of said subjects. But I didn't start reading about them until I had my personal experience. So I thought, just silly me, too suggestive for my own good. Until I stumbled upon another channel where he reads out stories mainly to do with Sasquatch. And I was amazed to discover that many people get lucky enough to have experiences of all kinds. Like, if you're open and accepting to the weird things that are outside the norm, not quite a conduit or a conduit, but uh, in a, if you see this, you'll probably see that kind of way. Yeah, again, I mean, this is what I was talking about with the last story. Um, okay, I'll continue the story. I once lived in an old house built in the early 1900s. That thing was haunted. There are many stories collaborate, collaborated by quite a few folks who have no reason to do so beyond telling the truth. This is one of my favorites, and there were several witnesses. We were already very aware that we had ethereal roommates. I have four kids. Three of them were born close together, all within four years of each other. It's like Irish triplets. And then a surprise kid came ten years after the last of the original three. You know, it's funny. We have a friend who, uh, when we met her and her husband, because they have children in their 20s, and then they have a kid our kid's age, and she said... He was our surprise baby. I said, oh, I, I, I get it. Daniel was my, what in the hell have I gone off to Southeast Asia and done now, baby? And they, fortunately, these people had a sense of humor and they laughed their asses off. This was out here in the county, not within the city limits of the People's Republic of Charlottesville, where I'm sure they would have locked me under the jail for making such a joke. <laughs> On with the story. I don't remember if the baby was born yet. I think not. But this was around... 30 to 35 years ago. Well, it's your kids about my age, sounds like. Because I'm 48. Your kids would have been be in their mid-40s now. My oldest would have been about 12 or 13 at the time. Actually, 48. About the, I'm about the age of your oldest kid, okay? I had a policy. I preferred my kids to be at home, but they could have all the friends they wanted over. One time, we rented a movie. There were about five or six friends of my kids, along with my kids and myself watching. The room we were in had one of those 70s hanging wagon wheel type light fixtures with five regular light bulbs that had those frosted glass chimney covers that just fit over the light bulb and sat on a groove. Very rustic western. Man, you're bringing back like scenes of those puke split green pea rough material couches and the matching drapes that were like made out of burlap. Who remembers that stuff from the... Keep getting my six. It was early evening, still daylight. Everything's cool, the movie is playing, kids are all scarfing down popcorn and juice, enjoying the movie. 
Suddenly, a noise about our heads makes every one of us look up to see this light fixture tremble a little. As we are still looking, a chimney glass raises up from the wheel, clears the light bulb it was just over, pauses very briefly, and then flies fast about six feet across the room to smash spectacularly against the wall. After a split second of shock, all hell broke loose as my Listen for heavy breathing right here around me. You know, some people think just talking about these things and reading stories like this opens that, that veil. Okay, smash spectacularly against the wall. After a split second of shock, all hell broke loose as my kids' friends lost their collective minds. There was a mad scramble for the door and they took off running for home. One kid was so freaked out he left his bike. I know another was crying as he ran. We cleaned up the glass and it took a while as it smashed so hard into the wall it went into, into many... Very loud tree knock. We are not alone. Continue to get my six and watch for movement. We cleaned up the glass and it took a while as it smashed so hard into the wall it went into many tiny pieces all over everything. It had actually scarred the wall, putting a dent or a cut into the plaster. It's coming from right back in here. We took the event in stride and we chastised what we had nicknamed Fred for smashing glass and scaring company off and then we resumed the movie of the kids that of the kids there that night only one stayed he had already experienced some of Fred's doings everyone else absolutely refused to come over ever it's, they're getting closer everyone else absolutely refused to come over ever again my son lost a friend who absolutely refused to have anything to do with him after that. I lived in that house for another 20 years after this event. You can use my name if you want. This story is well known in our circles. Edit as you please as well. Thanks for your channel and thank dearly too for hers as well. Take care, all of the off-grid and whatever the hell this channel is about family. Sincerely, Julie Tenning. Julie? Thank you so much for your story. And I'll tell you, I know it just ruffles some people's undergarments of choice that we don't really do tomatoes and corn and green beans anymore because we tell creepy stories in the woods. Suck it up, Buttercup. My channel, my content, and, and there's enough folks. I, I would rather have three to 5,000 people who enjoy watching the videos I wanna make than the half a million to a million who want to come by and watch the videos I don't want to make and then tell me how stupid I am for making them. Remember this, it's better to be hated for who you are than to be loved for who you're not. So who's with me on that one? Hey, haters gonna hate anyway. So come on back next time for some more stories. If you've got some, send them in. The email is crazylakeatmail.com crazylake at mail.com I'm gonna get out of here